You may remember this from my stream. So to fix this, we've got to remove the tantalum capacitors and test each of these lines to make sure we've got no shorts present after removing them all. So we'll get these ones off first. These are the line that blew out on the opposite side of the board, but I'm doing this side of the board as well just to be safe because it is also connected to the same rails. So we'll just get these off. And there you go, Bob's your mother's brother. And we'll get these ones off now as well. In total, the tokens account for 4,800 microfarads and um, 2,400 microfarads for the RSX and the same for the um, cell processor as well. So we've got to make sure that we sort of fall within that specification as well. So now we'll just probe these. And I think we're reading short here, which isn't right. We shouldn't be reading short there. On the bottom line we are, it's a low impedance part of the circuit. And here we go, here's the damage caused by that lovely explosion at the start. So let's get these damaged tantalum capacitors off. And you can see that they've actually gone in a chain reaction. The very last one I'm desoldering here didn't actually pop. And if you watch the very start of this video, you can see them sort of go off in that chain reaction pattern too. You can see them go one after another. There we go. Let's get rid of these damaged ones too. Nice little bit of shrapnel there as well. Let's get rid of that. There we go. And once you've got rid of the tokens, the original token capacitors, the NEC things, if you need to rework this area, it's much easier because you can get heat directly onto the pads. It's just a huge ground plane in this area, which sort of sops up heat like a sponge. Let's get these off. I'm taking these off so that I can test them all out of circuit, just to make sure that they are actually good. I'm not going to test the exploded ones. I have a feeling they might not work. Just a gut instinct that they won't work. Anyway, we'll get these off. And it's just all in a day of repairs. I've had a really good day, actually. I've enjoyed what I've done. Even though there was an explosion and it didn't work out at first, I've been enjoying myself. There we go, still getting short there, or what seems like short. And I think we're looking good on these rails now though. So that is good news. Probe around again, yep. Yeah. Okay, I kind of forgot to cord the uh, soldering on of these capacitors but what I'm doing now is the reason they blew out was because they weren't connected in parallel so we only had a few capacitors on that circuit that were functioning and they just went pop because they couldn't deliver the current that was required so what I'm doing is connecting them in parallel by using this bypass wire that when I'm collect uh, I'm connecting the uh, VC in with the VC out right now and as you can see I'm using quite high gauge wire to do that so, um, yeah, we're just making sure we get some good solid solder joints on this. We don't want this wire burning up while it's in operation. Again, it's a high current part of the circuit. These old PlayStation 3 FATs, they have very high power draw. I believe they are a 95 nanometer process, which to give you perspective these days, we're down to 7 and 5 nanometers on typical chips. So <laughs> things have come a long way. And as you can see, it looks like it's reading short now. It's not short, it's just low impedance, and that's good. That's good. I don't have a particularly sensitive multimeter.
Okay, so we'll just deal with these capacitors as well. I missed a bit of footage there. But what I'm doing is, you, you can probably see, I'm just tacking these into place. I'm not properly soldering them now. I just soldered them down to one of the lines just a little bit so that they're not going to blow away. And we'll use hot air to get those in properly. So let's just go ahead and put all of these in like this. And you might notice as well that the, uh, the stripe line is facing outwards. The inner part where the rear of these capacitors is, where there is no line. That is the ground plane. Tantalum capacitors have reverse polarity to electrolytic in terms of where the marking is. The marking marks the positive, not the negative on tantalum capacitors. I noticed a few people in my uh, live stream were telling me that I had the uh, polarity incorrect and they're wrong. I didn't have the polarity incorrect. It's just down to the fact that tantalums do it the other way around. I don't know why they do it the other way around, but I can totally understand why people thought I had the polarity wrong. Wasn't the case. The case was, they just weren't properly wired parallel. So anyway, we'll get these soldered down properly now using hot air like this. And once that solder starts to go, we'll see them start to move into position through the uh, action of uh, tension. And as we can see, the tension of the solder on the uh, capacitors is doing a pretty good job of pulling them into position. It's largely the same principles as soldering any other surface mount technology, really. Although, as you can see, this is a bit different because PlayStation 3s weren't designed for these components. So we'll check each of these. Solid, 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 solid rock hard solid great okay now we'll repeat the same thing again on this side of the board and um, although I didn't catch this footage each of these capacitors I measured with an ESR meter to get both the ESR values and their total capacitance and I made sure that this circuit would be able to deliver the required amount of uh, microfarads to each um, each chip and they're only off by like eight or nine microfarads which puts it in something like the uh, one percent range at least in terms of capacitance. In terms of resistance and ESR, they're probably a bit out of spec. But the original token capacitors, um, those can be out by up to 20%, plus or minus, so I'm not too worried about that. So let's get these in. Let's get them all in like this. And uh, these are supposed to be 220 microfarad, 6.3 volts. The 6.3 volts gives us a bit of uh, a bit of room. The original token capacitors, I believe, are 2.5 volts for the token 128, and the 128 just means that it has a 1200 microfarad capacitance on the original tokens. So again, we just tack them in. like so get one on the end here too you see we're a bit off here it's a little bit tricky to solder this one in place so we're sort of a little bit off the pad it's not a big deal though we've got conformal coating uh, around it so it's not going to short to the um, anywhere it shouldn't. Now we'll get some flux down. And as we all know, flux is excellent when you're doing any kind of soldering. And it's the same again as we did on the other side of the board, so we'll just go ahead and get this uh, soldered nicely. And we can probably position this a bit better with some heat in the board. The tension of the solder on the capacitors should pull them into a bit of a better position than they're all in right now. Yeah, and as we can see, they're starting to go. The only downside to tantalums is when they fail, they fail explosively, as you saw at the start of this video. Solid, 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 solid. All good. 
Yeah, perfect. That will do the job. So now what we're going to do is bridge the VC in and the VC out up for the uh, other side of the board. You only need one wire per, uh, per chip. The VC in and the VC out. They're connected on both sides of the boards through all these vias you can see. So we don't need to worry too much about that. Just get some good amount of solder on this. Bit of flux, let's make that joint a bit better. There we go, that's much better now. I'm happy with this more or less. Yeah, just a bit more. Yeah, there we go, that'll do. So just tin the uh, wire here as well. And you can see I am using quite thick wire. I scavenged this off of a uh, power plug actually. It's just to make sure we can deal with the required amperage. The current draw that's going to be coming through this. Okay, I'll get this soldered in. Excellent, I think that'll do the job. Now let's do some cleaning. It's in sore need of it. And a bit more. Leaving this flux isn't going to really damage the board, but we just want to get it off and get things looking a little bit nicer on there. I'm just using isopropyl alcohol. Uh, yeah, this is already beginning to look a lot better. Is good enough. Nearly. Get what we can off of this uh, kitchen towel as well. Again, I just don't really want to leave big globs of flux all over the board. And this is a huge, huge board. So let's just get as much of this off as we can. And same for this side. You can see this is a bit of a mess as well. Away with ye, O evil flux. And there we go. I think this is this is more or less okay. I'm I'm relatively happy with this now. Let's just um, clean up this as well. Flux tends to get everywhere when you're using hot air because it will just sort of liquefy and then blow around the board. Particularly when you're working on a board like this and you have a very high airflow and a very high temperature as well. But you know, we can see here it's flow it's flowed to these components. I don't think I even worked on these. Oh actually I may have worked on that capacitor. I might have replaced it. I might have replaced that on the live stream. Can't remember. Anyway, we'll get get it all cleaned up. This is good enough. This is good enough. Okay. Just sort of dry the board with heat 
just to sort of accelerate the process. And you can see there, you can see the jumper wires on the RSX and cell there too. All right, I've just re-redone the caps in this. I don't know if this is going to work. I'm not a clue. No idea. Hope it does, but you know, I'm not holding out a whole lot of hope on this one. So I'm going to plug it in. It's plugged in. Okay, so power's active. And when I hit this, it'll either blow up or not. Let's find out. Oh, we're getting nothing. No power. Hmm. Okay. Well, it did blow up before, so... Switch that to AC. Let's see if the fuse went. Nope, it's got power at that. All right. Maybe I missed a connector. That's possible, isn't it? I did. I did miss a connector. Okay. Okay. Let's um let's get a pair of tweezers. I mean, other minds glue this blue tab thing back onto it. Hey, the blue tab's in. I got this in before. Let's try uh, holding them together. Annoyingly, it came off. Let's try that. Need something with a bit more grip. Okay, I think that's in. Yeah, that's definitely in. I know my white balance is all off, but I can't be uh, bothered to sort that out right now. Okay, we've got some plastic shielding in the way in case it goes bang again. Just make sure on the back it's switched off. And we'll plug it in. Again. Switch that on. We've got a red light so it's in standby. If I turn this on, we'll know if it goes bang or not. Ooh, it has not gone bang. I've got a green light and a blue light. Ooh, that's promising. That is promising, isn't it? Okay. Anything in the drive? Ooh, look at that. I got a free game with it. No yellow light of death anymore. Oh yes, have at it, son. Have at it. All right, let's grab a spare HDMI. 
we go. So we've got a HDMI. Wow! Yes! 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 Alright, we've got a PlayStation pad. I don't know how to sync these, actually. How do you sync them? Do you just turn them on and then they do their thing? Oh! <laughs> right, okay. So what's the date today? Today is the 6th of the 6th, 2021. Well, would you look at that? You beauty. You absolute beauty. Okay. You incredible machine. Thank you. Thank you. You absolute Yes, 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 yes. Incredible. Incidentally, this is a really good game too. GTA 4 was amazing. Although, them load times. But you know what? You absolute beauty of a machine. You work, don't you? Fudge. Yeah. And with that, I think we can call this a successful repair. We've gone from a non-functioning yellow light of death PlayStation to an exploded PlayStation to a perfectly normal functioning PlayStation once again. So as always, it's been good having you along for the journey. It's been an interesting repair to go through. It was kind of fun to have sparks and explosions. So, you know, I enjoyed that. I hope you enjoyed that too. And um, as always, I think it's fair to say, das Vidanya.